Hey everyone and welcome back. Lately I've been focusing some of my energy on power generation ideas. Now there's a lot of area in this field for experimentation so I just kind of started by throwing things at the wall and seeing what would stick. In the background I'm still working on getting that supercharged GX390 ready for a video. I think I have the part designed to fix my problem as well as an updated better design for the supercharger. In this video we're going to be looking at some of the water turbine designs I've been playing with. Now for the first design I've been working on an axial style turbine. The working concept behind this is kind of like the lily pad kickstarter device that was offered a few years ago. I'm not even sure if that's still a thing anymore. This turbine has the magnets right on the turbine itself and the coils mounted inside the housing. For bearings I went with a stainless shaft and a just plastic bushing design for the axle load and for the thrust load I 3D printed a couple bearing cups for the thrust bearing and used 6 millimeter balls from an airsoft gun. Through the design of this there's been a few variants and concepts and ideas and I've had varying success with it. For the second design I'm going with a Pelton style wheel being as this design isn't really a new concept to the 3D printing world. With this one my goal is to have a completed project and what I mean by that is a working unit that somebody could print out, assemble and take into the bush or wherever they have a source of pressurized water and generate electricity efficiently. So a word of warning to anyone who downloads this and attempts it, make sure the magnets are really well glued in. I had one come out and take out this coil and my leg. Unfortunately I didn't get that on camera but if you're going to try this with the vacuum cleaner or air pressure like I am, make sure to stand clear and wear safety glasses. For the coils, the wire I'm using is 0.3 millimeters in diameter and I'm using about 130 wraps. For the core I'm using a 3D printed frame with steel screws. Now preferably I'd like to machine these out of steel but for testing purposes I'll just go with the steel screws as a core for now. Also to note, winding coils by hand kinda sucks. For initial testing I only have one coil hooked up to the bread rectifier and I get about half a volt, a little bit more, but I'm a little bit leery to spin it super fast. After the initial testing working at least somewhat, I continued printing out the parts. This time it has the shroud and the coil cover on it. This should improve airflow as well as I have the two other coils installed for the one phase. And I ran the wires to the main support shaft like would be in the final design. Now during this test I have a USB buck converter hooked up to it. And I'm just testing the voltage before the USB buck converter and the LED. At this point I'm not doing any serious testing, I'm just kind of messing around to get a good mental picture of how this works. Here I'm just doing an open voltage test, I ended up getting about 3 volts which comes down to about 1 volt per coil. Now I'm spinning it at about 10,000 RPM which is a little bit faster than the intended final use case. So I'm going to have to play with the magnets and coils to get a little bit more voltage out of it at a lower RPM. And right around here is where the ADD kicked in. Since I wasn't overly happy with the results I was getting on the axle turbine, I immediately switched gears and started printing out the other design. The reality is this turbine isn't really anything special, but I haven't found a complete 3D printed unit that's available for download and use, so I figure I'm going to try and fill that niche. To do that, I'm going to design it to work with a few different motors as generators. This one is a little brush motor, uh, the CD-ROM drive tray or DVD player tray from a computer DVD drive is what I'm using here and it's giving me about 3 to 5 watts at 20,000 RPM give or take. Again most of these calculations are just rough estimates as I'm not doing anything particularly scientific at the, po at the moment. Now I show off how easy it is to service this unit by switching out to a larger stepper motor and reassembling it. Now the easiest way to disassemble this unit is to just thread off the coupling housing 
to note in the final version this coupling will have a lock nut on it. The idea behind this concept is you might have a few generators kicking around and if one were to fail in service it could be switched out in minutes for another working unit. The only thing you need to worry about during assembly is making sure the dogs on the dog coupling line up together. Now the reason this coupling is loose and the dog style instead of a Lovejoy style with a spider in between is to have deflection capability so if anything deforms or isn't perfectly straight it'll come out in the coupling instead of wearing out the bearings between the motor and the housing. To go with the large generator I need a larger bridge rectifier so I stole this from a PC power supply or something tossed a capacitor on it, wired some alligator clips and wires to it, and this will be my test bridge rectifier. Doing an open voltage test with the larger generator and a larger rectifier. Now in practice this will probably run a little bit faster than with water, but I should be able to get pretty close to the vacuum cleaner with 80 pounds of water pressure in the right nozzle. That being said, I see a good 30 volts here, which is pretty impressive. Also enough to shock me, so I gotta be careful. With the open voltage test being pretty impressive, I'd like to see what sort of amperage this will make. Now, I currently don't have a working amp meter that's in this range, so I'm going to do it with math. I have this 50 watt rated 1 ohm resistor, and I'm going to check voltage, well, I guess voltage drop, knowing the full voltage and the after voltage through the resistor, I should be able to calculate the wattage within a ballpark. So with a voltage drop of around 30 volts, if my math is correct, that gives me about 10 watts. That's a conservative estimate, I think it's a little bit higher, but 10 watts is in the usable range. Now I feel like there's a little bit more power here because this has no problem accelerating. And I know under water pressure it'll have more torque, although a little bit less RPM. So I should have a little bit of headroom for larger motors. Happy with the vacuum cleaner testing, I make a little mount to mount on my picnic table and hook it up to the garden hose outside to see what sort of results I get. For water testing, I'm not going to bother with the CD-ROM drive motor. I'm just starting with the smaller stepper motor. Starting off slowly, I kind of bump it up to about half open, three quarters open immediately the voltage jumps up to around 20 volts or just under. Now I'm just running it slow, well because on air I couldn't really run it this slow and I want to see how everything works together make sure nothing's causing any problems before I give her the beans. You can also see here that the nozzle could use a little bit of improvement but with this setup I'm really not using that much water although I have no way of calculating the actual flow right now. Also just kind of a side note, I love the way this thing sounds. As I'm getting ready to do my full voltage test, my chickens decided to come and join me. At any rate, for the open voltage test on water, I started a little bit slow again on, at the 19 volts and then just opened it wide open. Now I don't get consistent flow from my plumbing around here, like the, the pressure goes up and down. I think I'm on the end of a string in the city, so this is kind of hard to judge. If you were running this on some sort of dam, you'd probably have a lot more consistent water pressure. Either way, I make it to about 21 volts, give or take. So that should be a usable charging voltage to run anything at the 12 volt level. To charge a 12 volt battery or to you know step it down or run it through capacitors even to run a 12 volt circuit of some sort as long as you had consistent load it should keep anything under the 15 volts maximum most 12 volt electronics have on them now rough calculating for the lower voltage overall on the voltage drop i am expecting about five to six watts out of this just because i'm losing the rpm and flow volume from the air that the water just doesn't have now if you had increased pressure, I might be able to do this more effectively or I might be able to run a larger nozzle to get a little bit more flow which would then increase the RPM a little bit, hopefully. Now when it comes to total power output, 
I think I have a little bit of headroom on torque. Like, a lot more than I realized. And I don't even have this valve sealed here. So if I got that sealed and a little bit better nozzle, I might be looking at 100 to 200 watts out of this little unit. Which would be pretty sweet. With the higher available output, I decided to try a NEMA 17 motor as a generator. I test the open voltage on a single coil, check the other single coil, and then wire them both in series to see what the total voltage might be. And I end up with about 30 volts per coil and about 50 volts in total. Which is nicely in a usable range for lots of different applications. For a load test, I've decided to use a different load than previously. This one is two 8 ohm resistors, which will give me about 4 ohms of total resistance. This is a little closer to the uh, sweet spot where it won't just suck all the voltage down to basically nothing. For an amp meter, I'm using this one that I set up for a solar panel. Now this one reads double, so if it's reading 4 amps, it reads actually 2 or just under 2. So you can see here that I'm getting a reading of just over 4 amps which then puts me just about 2 amps in reality which gives me a ballpark of about 100 watts which seems like a little bit of a stretch so maybe the higher voltage is affecting this little amp meter and might be pushing it a little bit too much so I'm going to assume about 1 amp which then gives me about 50 watts which seems pretty reasonable for what I got here while messing around with this, I noticed an interesting effect. There seems to be a particular sweet spot in the RPM where the voltage rises. Now, I'm not sure if that has more to do with the appropriate resistance or the fact that the magnetic saturation of the core has something to do with it. And what I'm assuming when I mean that is the the polarity of the pulses from the rotor on the stepper motor are is changing so fast that the core can't keep up and I'm actually losing total power output although the voltage increases it's past the point of efficiency so although it looks good I'm not actually seeing usable power so that being said and knowing the specs on the motor 24 volts is probably about peak anything after that and the amperage starts to drop off that's why the motor seems to increase under load instead of decreasing RPM. This is just a, you know, scientific guess. I'm not 100% sure on that, and if you have a better idea of what's going on, please feel free to correct me in the comments. Now, if I'm correct with all of what I just said, I should be doing the total wattage calculation at around 24 volts, which would then give me the about 50 watts that I was guessing at. All of that considered, there still seems to be some physical headroom on the rotational torque. Especially that I get the peak uh, RPM at around quarter throttle on the water. Now I'm sure power output isn't linear on something like this, but if it was, that would mean I have approximately 200 watts available on this rotor and nozzle combination running 80 pounds of water pressure which although might be difficult to get all of it, gives me a pretty promising amount of power on this small unit. Conservatively, I would expect to be able to possibly pull out 75 to 100 watts continuously on something like this reliably. As it is, this unit just has a steel shaft or steel straw running on plastic bushings, so at least some minor improvements might be used nylon insert bushings or completely plastic or ceramic non-corrosive roller element bearings that would improve efficiency and reliability. And at this point, you guys are up to date as far as I am. Now I plan on this being kind of a running series, so basically whenever I come up with something new to test or, or manage to find a location where I can test something like this in the field, I'll make another video about it and serialize it as power generation part whatever I'm on. Other than that, I recently realized I should have named my channel engineering with ADD and with that realization I'm going to try and focus on a few less random projects and keep a little bit more of a focused path. I'm still gonna have multiple things going at once but I'd like to get some other things finished that I've already started and from that point keep the focus on usable items and of course the namesake superchargers and turbochargers designs. I have a lot of different projects on the go that don't involve 3D printing that could uh, be interesting on here, but 
there's only so much time and energy and better to keep a focus I think so I plan on improving the focus and maybe trying to improve the production quality a little bit or the best as I can and from this point forward I'm just going to bring out videos as I get them finished rushing around to hit a deadline is not something that seems to be really good for me it's pushing my blood pressure up along with other problems that I already have to deal with so I'm just gonna kinda slow down and work at my own pace and for anyone who's all the way to the end here thanks for bearing with me and I ho hope you enjoy the channel and I imagine you do if you watched all this way so thank you very much have yourselves a good one guys